Hey guys, Jason here. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to take a photograph and turn that into a 3D relief. I'm going to be using the Marine Corps EGA or Eagle Globe and Anchor. Ooh, raw. And we're going to turn that into a 3D relief. Now the image I'm going to use, I just went to Google and Googled Marine Corps logo. It was the very second one over from Wikimedia Commons. And this is the image that we're going to use. We're going to be using Carvaco Maker Plus. You really need Maker Plus or the full version to do this. There's not really a way to do it with the basic Maker. We're going to start a new model. And I'm going to be using 30 inches by 30 inches. I like to use a large model model because it's easier to work with than working with smaller sizes. That way if you ever want to shrink this down it can easily be shrunk down but the details will remain at a larger size. Once we get our project open we're going to open up a bitmap and I'm just going to import that picture. We're in the 3D view. Let's go to our 2D view. We're going to use our bitmap to vector tool and I'm going to reduce the colors. I'm going to reduce this down to the five basic colors that are in the EGA. Black, red, blue, white, and yellow. Press apply. If we zoom in here, we can see that we've got some bleed over color in the pixelation with the red. There's some blue here. We're going to mainly use the black and the white to try and get the picture. Select black and create vectors. Let's go to our 3D view so we can see those vectors. We got a pretty good outline of the EGA. The eagle needs some fixing here. And the rope is decent. We didn't get any of the inside stuff. While I have this open, I want to go ahead and move these vectors to a new layer. We can do that by highlighting the vectors that we want to move. And I'm going to select the EGA here right click it and move vectors to a new layer. We're going to title this new layer EGA and then I'm going to turn that vector off so that we can get just the rope. I'm going to highlight the rope. We're going to move this vector to a new layer and we'll call this new layer rope. Let's go back to our default layer. Now I'm going to turn those two off. We'll go back to our 2D screen. This time we're going to pick the white as our primary color for the bitmap to vector tool. We're going to press create vectors Let's go back to our 3D view. And this time we got all of the lettering and the circles. We did capture some things that we don't want. So we can simply delete this stuff. We just delete it out of here. We can delete that rope. We already got a good one. I'm going to move these rings to a new layer. Just going to highlight these. I'm holding the shift button down. Right click, move vectors to new layer. We'll call this new layer rings. Back to our default layer. Turn the rings layer off. Now we have the lettering. We're going to move this to a new layer. And we're going to call this layer lettering or letters. And the main reason for doing this, it's easier to work on all these different components separately and then bring them together in the end. You can see now that we have a nice vectorized image of that picture. Real quick, I want to show you something. This line's got some bumps in it. Some more bumps up here. I'll show you a quick way to fix that. I'm going to highlight that line. I'm going to go down here to the Fit Art Vectors and Spline tool. And first we're going to spline these, the 0 .01 inch. And then, close this, I'm going to come back and we're going to hit the Arc to Vectors. The 0 .001 will fit arcs. That cleaned our line up pretty good. If we go to our Node Editor, this line is now made out of a bunch of arcs, which will make for easy machining. Let's fix this eagle really quick. We'll delete that. We're going to go to our node editor. I'm going to insert a node with I. I'm going to insert one here, I. And then we're going to press C for cut. C for cut and delete. I'm going to come up here. 
and I'm just going to cut this node and this node and that should delete that and then we can close this vector with a curve and let's also close this vector with a curve and then let's see if we can make those look a little better like about like that this side's a little skinnier than this side so we can uh, let's make it a little wider and that fixed our eagle okay when I go back and I'm gonna turn off everything but the EGA okay now that we have our EGA separated the first thing we're going to do is highlight the outside edge or the outside border and I also want to click on all the voids if I turn on my bitmap I can see this was a void this is a void that's a void we've got one here here and here I'm holding shift down to highlight all these at the same time and one here and if we turn that back off we have oop, we missed one here now we just have the outline of our EGA we're now gonna go to our shape editor and we're gonna use the round shape editor or the round profile and I wanna have this on add and if I remove my vector lines you can see we're already getting the shape with just that outline now it is a little too much at the moment so I'm going to reduce that down and we're also going to give it a base height I'm going to start with a 0.15 and that's going to raise that up and we just want to give it a basic shape with our slider here we can change the angle of the curve on top and we're going to add some more detail in just a moment but this is our general shape okay once we like that we're at the 25 degree angle I'm going to press apply. Let's get those vector lines back. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is while holding shift, we're just going to highlight all the rest of the vectors. And I'm going to go to the square and we're going to press subtract. Now, if I turn off my vector lines, you can see what it did was now everything is subtracted. What we can do is change the angle of that gap to be taller and thinner and that'll give us these nice cut down designs. Let's take off the starting height of 0.15. Let's remove that so that this groove doesn't cut down too deep. And what that does is that cuts all of our profile or detail into our objects. We still haven't fully gotten our shapes yet, but we're going to get to that in just a few minutes. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. We're at a 65 degree angle. I'm going to press apply. All right, now we're going to work on each one of the parts individually. The first thing I want to do is give the world a little better shape. So I'm going to grab my circle tool here, and we're just going to draw a circle. And it doesn't have to be perfect right now. We're going to go up here to our transform tool, and then we'll transform that to, to be a better fit. Let's see, we'll just move it to there. You know, get it in the right spot. And that's just a circle that sort of going around the outside of that globe there. Go back to our shape editor and we're going to pick round. No start height. And we want to add. Let's turn off our vectors. Now you can see we can reshape that globe and we're adding material to it. So we're adding the depth that we need. So let's look at it from a side profile. This looks very nice. We're getting some nice depth to that planet. Okay, let's move on to turn our vectors back on. Let's close this again. Now let's click on the continents. I turned it sideways so I could see those vectors a little easier. And we're going to make those stand proud off of the globe. So go back to our shape editor and we're going to pick plane we're adding material and we're just going to add point 1 Let's turn off these for a minute just see what that looks like and that made the continents stand proud on the globe we're going to press apply now i'm going to give this rope that goes around the anchor some definition we're going to turn our vectors back on and basically i just want to highlight all of the rope vectors so i'm just going to click on all these rope vectors 
Hey guys, now that I have the rope vector selected, I'm going to go back to my shape editor and we're going to pick round. Let's turn off our vectors so we can see what we're doing. And we're really going to exaggerate this, I think. Give that the most detail or depth that we can. Just going to max that out at 90. And that's looking quite nice. Let's press apply. We are at add again. So we're just adding material on top of our pre-existing material. That gave our rope some nice definition. Close this. I'm going to kind of do the same thing with the eagle. We're going to highlight all the parts in the eagle except for the border. Okay, now that we have the eagle highlighted, we're going to go back to our shape editor. And this time I'm going to reduce the angle. And I have it on square because we're giving it eagle some shape giving those each a ridge. And the flatter that you make this angle, the flatter that that ridge will be, or the more pronounced it will be. And we press apply. I still have this eagle highlighted. I'm going to go to my smoothing tool, and we're going to smooth out these feathers so that they sort of blend back down. We're going to pick selected vector so that we're only doing the uh, eagle. I don't want to smooth it out so much that we lose all the detail. But I did want to smooth it some. Okay, we're going to press apply. Okay, we're going to work on this banner for just a second. Let me go back to our vectors. Now, this banner is rounded, but I want to show you another. Let's go back to the rounding tool, except what I want to do is create a small, almost negative, so that is a little more flatter. We're going to press apply. We just applied a negative round to that banner. Something else we could do is if we wanted to make Semper Fidelis always faithful, if we wanted to give that a little shape, go back to our shape editor, square, and subtract, and we can add some depth to those letters. By making this sharper, it will sharpen the edges and take out some of the rounding, but it also make it deeper. So when it tries to carve that, it's going to try and carve it really deep. It's a balance between having a base to that groove, leaving it at a nice tall point, like 60%. Now I have a nice groove for my bit to carve that out in. Press apply. Okay, and now to give our eagle and our anchor a little more shape, the next tool we're going to use, click on smoothing. We get all of our shape tools. We have a carve tool and a deposit tool. We're going to be using the deposit tool. When using the deposit tool, it's best to have the strength on 1% or all the way down. You also can change the smoothness. I recommend when adding material to have it set for really high smoothness. This will give you a rounded material look. If you want a taller, more pronounced look, you can reduce the smoothing. Uh, but for what we're going to do, this works best when it's at its highest. For the radius, Anytime you're going to add material with the deposit tool, the radius needs to be about the size. And you can see this little dark circle that's around my X here. And it's kind of hard to see, but you want that to be about the size of whatever it is you're going to manipulate. So if I'm going to try and add some material to this ring right here, I want this circle to be about the size of the ring. What I want to do is reduce this size down till I get the size of whatever it is I want to add. And it's also easier if you push the lazy brush distance and set a really small distance. I like 0 0.05. This helps if your hand is not super steady. This will add a little bit of delay to the adding so that it comes a little bit behind where your cursor is instead of right on top of it. So with our radius reduced, we're going to start over here on the end. And with one fluid motion, I'm just going to come around to here. So I'm just going to take one fluid motion and I'm just going to draw around to here. I'm also going to add, I'm just going to hold my button down and go back and forth right here. And then if I look from the side, you could actually see that we're adding material. We're going to do that again. I'm going to just take one fluid motion and come around. I'm going to add a little bit to this, and we're going to add a little bit to this. Now, it doesn't matter that this is not perfectly smooth or even. If you want to, you can turn it here on its side and just work on the spots that look uneven. If you want to give that a little bit more shape, 
If you need to take some away, you put too much down. The carve tool is just the opposite. You put the strength at one, the smooth is at 100, and you shrink this down to the size of whatever you, it is that you're working with, and it's going to do just the opposite. It's just going to take away the same amount that you put in. So if I want to just take away some there, I can just take away a little bit here, take away a little bit here, a little bit here. We're going to smooth it out. If we go to our smoothing tool, our smoothing tool does need a little bit of strength in order to work, but the same principle applies. You want your radius to be the size of whatever you're working on. So if I'm working on this ring, I want my radius to be about the size of that ring. And we can just use our smoothing tool and come back across this a few times and smooth it back out. When we smooth out the whole relief, at the end, it's going to smooth out all these edges and sides. That comes in just a few minutes, but right now we're just trying to get some shapes in here. So we go back to our, let's go back to our deposit tool, and I'm going to add some to the anchor here, but I need to make my radius a little bigger. And don't worry that you're shaping the outside of this. I'm going to zero outside of vector in a few minutes, and we're going to get rid of all that. I'll show you in just a second. So now that we have our radius about the size of this, let's start here at the end and just pull all the way across. I'm going to turn it to the side so I can see what I'm doing. We're going to make a couple of passes here. We're just going to give this some depth. Now this just takes some playing around with to whatever you like the best. Let's come down here. We're going to add to our anchor. And I like to start in one spot and make one long sweeping movement. One long sweeping movement. This helps keep everything nice and even. We're going to come down here and give this blade some edge. Same thing here. And I'm not worried about getting outside of it. Again, I'm not. that's not... We're not worried about that part. We need some here. Let's see. That's looking pretty good there. That's looking pretty good there. Let's come up to our eagle. We're going to give that body of that eagle. right down the middle. The upper wings where the muscles and the bones would be. This would be the largest part of the eagle. We're going to come down give the wings some height, some depth. And you can kind of look from the side just to see what we're doing there. Giving that some nice height and depth. Okay, now we got a really nice looking EGA. We're going to close this. Let's go back to our vectors. Now I want to show you, we're going to go back and highlight all those outside vector lines again. And we want to get those voids again. And if we go up to the top, we're going to hold our button down and go to zero outside of vector. And when we click that, it's going to cut everything off outside of that. That took all that rounding and everything that falls outside of that vector that we might have added material to. That just gets rid of all that. It cleans that up very nice. Turn off our vectors. So now all we need to do is add the rest of the details. So if I want to turn my rings on, turn our vectors on. Let's real quick, let's have a look. So something I just noticed, it looks like we missed this yellow line on the inside. So we're going to need to create that real quick. If I click on this inner line, and we're just going to make a offset vector from it. Inwards, radius, let's try a point 0.1 offset. No, that's not near enough. Let's go back. Uh, let's try a point 0.25 quarter inch. 
Okay, I think that got it. We can go back to our material view here. Close this. We're going to start adding all of the rest of the components. The first thing I want to do is I want to give the entire piece a base. I'm just going to click on this outside vector of the rope and we're going to go to our shape editor and we're just adding a plane and we're going to start this off at a quarter inch. And this is going to add a quarter inch of material underneath our EGA. Press apply. Let's close that. And if we turn off our vectors, we can see we've created a raised plaque there, 0.25. Let's turn our vectors back on. We highlight these four. Go back to our shape editor. We're in the add function. We're adding a plane. And let's add 0.15. Turn off our vectors to see what we're doing. We can add those raised rings. press apply. Then we have the part in the middle that the Marine Corps is going to sit on and we're also adding a 0.15 plane to that. Press apply. Let's turn that off. And now we've added that little base. Now I'm done with the rings. Let's turn off the EGA and let's turn off our rope. I just want to work with the letters right now. So I'm going to highlight the lettering. We're going to go back to our shape editor. This time we're going to add square to give it a point on the top. I'm going to turn my vectors off to see what I'm making. And I want these to stand off of the base there. So I'm going to add a 0.15. And we're going to reduce the angle so that they're not really sharp. And let's go to a 20% angle. And that's going to give them that ridged letter look that stands proud. I think we can add a little more material. Let's make 0.25 or a quarter inch and that looks much nicer. A little bit more defined, a little bit more in line with the EGA. That's looking a lot better. Okay and now lastly, let's close this. We need to work on our rope. Let's go to the rope. And so the first thing we want to do is give the rope some body. So we're going to select the two outside lines, go to our shape editor, and we're picking round and add Let's turn off our vectors. We're going to give this a nice looking rope shape. Just use your judgment here. I'm going to go with a 45 degree angle. Let's press apply. We'll highlight all of our vectors. Go back to our shape editor. Now that we have just the rope, let me turn these vectors off. And I'm using the add function again. And this time I have all the vectors highlighted. That's going to give us this detail that was inside the rope to give it that rope appearance or rope look. And we're just going to press apply. Somehow we lost our letters. Let's go back to our letters and we're going to redo that really quick. Let's turn our letters back on and turn our rope off. Go back to these doing these letters that we accidentally did not keep. 0.25 and let's press apply. There we go. Now we can take the entire relief and apply a smoothing to it. And this is going to help smooth out all of those edges and shape. And what you want to do is just, you can start at zero and then just apply smoothing until it starts giving you a really smooth look. Don't worry about all this little texturing and stuff. That has a lot to do with the graphics. But you want to give it a nice smooth look. 30% looks pretty good. And we just press apply and now we have our EGA. And that's it, guys. That's how you take a photo and make a 3D relief. If you like this content, please subscribe, give us a like, and share this with someone. It's good to get this info out there. Thanks, guys. Oorah. Simplify.